At a writers' festival a little while ago, I was asked a question that I get from time to time, sometimes with a sort of accusatory tone, but in this instance it was very friendly. The question was, why don't you ever write a book with a female main character? And the short answer is that I do. I wrote a book called Money Run, I wrote another one called Hit List, I wrote another one called Replica, I wrote another one called The Spider Army, I wrote another one called The Squid Slayer, but you may not have heard of any of these because uh, none of them sold as well as my books about um, male characters. Uh, in fact, most of them are out of print now, I think, sadly. And for a long time, I assumed that this meant that I just was not good at writing female characters. That seemed to be a likely explanation. Um, I haven't even included in this stack all the manuscripts that I wrote with a female hero that I couldn't find a publisher for, so I thought maybe I wasn't good at it. Uh, and then, a few years after that, I wrote a book called 300 Minutes of Danger that became my best-selling novel of all time, basically. It, uh, uh, it was an international bestseller tra translated into several languages. It was super exciting and a huge surprise. And there are ten stories in this book. That means ten characters, five boys, and five girls. So... Um, I thought, well, either this was just a fluke or my ability to write female characters isn't the problem. Um, I repeated the experiment with a book called 400 Minutes of Danger, Five Boys, Five Girls. It, again, it sold really well. Ditto, 500 Minutes of Danger. I wrote the Countdown to Danger series, which is a choose-your-own-adventure style series where uh, the reader gets to make the choices, including, at the very beginning, choosing the gender of the character, boy or girl. That went fine. This one also went fine, this one also went fine, so I figured there must be something else going on. Um, and I unraveled the mystery when I was working part-time as a bookseller. This was uh, before I quit the day job and became a full-time writer. And when I was a bookseller, I would be wandering around the shelves trying to sell books not usually to children directly, I would be trying to sell books from the kids' fiction section to their parents. And so many times I would pick up a great book, uh, someone would, would come and say, Hi, uh, my son, he's, um, he's a bit of a reluctant reader, but he likes kind of sci-fi action movies. Have you got anything that he might enjoy? And I would say, yes, right this way, follow me. And I would take them around the corner to where... Um, uh, Lifespan of Starlight by Talia Kalkipsakis was. And I would say, okay, this is a book about a kid living in the future where everyone has a chip um, that identifies them and this kid steals a chip from a time traveller and then becomes hunted by um, people who are hunting the time traveller using the chip. So uh, not only is there lots of um, time travel, but there's lots of sort of explosions and daring stunts and thievery and, and, you know, lies and deception and all that stuff. And their parents would go like, wow, that sounds great. And then I would hand it to them and they would look at it and they'd say, ah, he won't read this. It's got a girl in it. And it was indeed a book about a girl. And if, um, and I kind of wanted to grab those parents by the shoulders and shake them, except I wouldn't have been allowed to and would have quickly lost my job at the bookstore. Because when I was a kid, uh, when I was a young boy, I would read books about girls all the time. Um, in fact, I mostly did that because the books about boys tend to be also about things that I wasn't interested in, like sport or cars or farting. <laughs> so, um, but... Uh, so I actually think boys are pretty open-minded in their reading, if you give them the opportunity to be, but parents who are desperate to appeal to their reluctant reader son go looking for a character who resembles them in the hope that the problem is that they have not seen themselves reflected enough in the literature. Whereas in reality, people can be reluctant readers for all sorts of reasons, and they're not all boys, by the way. So girls were willing to buy my... My readership tends to be about 50-50 boys and girls anyway, but the girls just pick up the books because they like reading and their parents are happy with that. Um, the boys are given the books by their parents um, who seem to be very suspicious of there being a female main character. So... Nowadays, what I tend to do is the main character will typically be male, but he will be surrounded by 
um, female characters. So almost every other character will be female. Some of them will be quote unquote strong female characters. Others will be weak or flawed or broken. Some of them will be evil. Others of them will be good. Um, but I know that I just need to sneak past the parents in order to get to the more open-minded readers themselves. So I don't know who's going to watch this video, um, but if you are a young man and you're kind of sceptical of reading a book about a girl, please don't be. They can be just as much fun, if not more. Um, one of the reasons that I read and have always read is to discover the stories of people who are not like me. I'm not looking to see my own life reflected. I'm looking to escape from my own life and discover someone else's. Um, if you are a parent of a boy or a teacher of a boy or a librarian uh, who, you know, uh, gives books to boys, um, please give them the opportunity to make an open-minded choice. Don't just, uh, don't patronize them because that, that's only gonna make the problem worse. And if you are a bookseller, please don't get lazy like I did, because I know how tempting it is to eventually stop recommending books about girls to parents of boys or people buying for boys um, because you know it's going to be a tough sell. Um, yes, it's a tough sell, but it's worth it. Um, and you can help those boys discover books that they otherwise um, that they would otherwise never get to experience. And some of those, most of those, uh, can be really, really, really good books. So thanks for watching. Um, I welcome your comments down below on uh, what you do to appeal to reluctant readers, what you think about the whole reluctant reader um, boy-girl debate, like uh, the, the causes of, of that sort of statistical difference between the reading habits of, of different gendered kids. And, um, and ultimately just what you would, if you just want to recommend some books down below, some with uh, exciting female protagonists, then that would be great. Thanks for watching.